and we're live what's up what's up hey. i forgot the way i'm supposed to say my intro and janine you have to do it afterwards it's when i say hey it's me ray your turn hey it's me janine <laughs> it's your girl janine i love it i feel like you did a great job <laughs> So we have to introduce ourselves. Thank you, thank you. So Janine, we're gonna start with you. Introduce yourself. Let them know. First of all, don't let them scare you at all. Make sure you're bossed up, right? And Always. Two, just let them know who you are. Introduce yourself really quickly. So I'm Janine, and I, what can I say? I you've been polyamorous been. ten plus years. I mean, yeah, I've been. I've been polyamorous for at least 10 years, 10 plus years, and I've damn. tried, and I've had, uh, I've tried multiple dynamics, and um, right now I'm working on a core relationship, and I'll be with adding you. another Tell one at you. some point. <laughs> Ray and I are dating, the beautiful Raya, <laughs> this side. <laughs> <laughs> I think they know who you're talking about, but I'm like over here just blushing so hard right now. <laughs> um, that's all I have to say right now. Okay, for sure. So we got Janine with us. And, and, and isn't Janine a bad bitch? Like, can, can we get a full view? Like, we need to turn around. We need to do it all. Hey. This is a beautiful woman right here. Like, y'all need to stop. Hey. hey, wait, hold on. Can we get that turn? Woo! <laughs> This no, that's all you get right now. Woman right here. We got Nova in the chat. You know, yesterday when we were doing this, I couldn't even see the chat. Nova says, what's good, people? We're doing pretty good. How are you, Nova? Okay. So, like, Janine, who is so intelligent and so just well-rounded and such a thinker, she thought it would be good if we start this show off on a serious tip, Okay. And a topic that she suggested to me is, ugh, and I almost like want to just collapse because it's so relatable to me as an individual. But like the topic was symptoms of depression and how polyamory either improves, decreases, or just in any other way informs depression because like this is gonna sound bad and I'm a member of this both communities I am a person who is polyamorous and I'm also a person who deals with mental health issues and what I can't say is that these two communities often overlap there are many people in the polyamorous community who consider themselves as people who deal with mental illness or who are neurodivergent in some other way and that's just what it is. And I kind of wanted to dig into Janine's opinion. Like, do you think polyamory improves a person's symptoms with depression, decreases those symptoms, or it just informs the way that they move and deal with those symptoms? Like, what's your perspective? It's all about how you take care of yourself. So if you are being true to yourself, then polyamory can help. Um, because a lot of people find happiness in practicing polyamory. But if you are not working on your secure attachments, your healthy boundaries, um, you're feeling depressed, and you're not working on your self care, then polyamory is only going to add complex mm. complexity to your life. It's only going to complicate things, which I think can you know, that can lead to an issue uh, if you're trying to find more peace in in your life at that moment. Yeah, and I definitely agree with that. And I would love, like, if you could kind of delve into that a little bit more, like, what are some of the ways that polyamory can exacerbate these negative symptoms of depression or anxiety, et cetera? Hey, it's Cos Girl. We got Cos Girl in the chat saying, hey, beautiful ladies, what's up? Loving the discussion. Hey, boo. Hey. You said, uh, what are some symptoms that it could help? Not, no. Well, what I'm asking is, what are some of the ways that the symptoms can be worsened jumping into a polyamorous union when you're not ready and you have other mental health issues that you need to be dealing with? 
um, like anxiety, depression. Um, I mean, symptoms like, like if you already have low self-esteem, polyamory is not going to make you have more self-esteem. Um, you have to work on your self-esteem and what you like, what makes you happy um, before you go and look for more to add. I mean, if dating yeah. one person is complicated and and not helping your depression, adding more people is not going to help. So, I mean, symptoms can be so many things. It's just when you're depressed, are you, how many people out there are even, are they dating when they're depressed? Like when you go to look for a partner, do you, you know, are you like, oh, if they're depressed, then I'll go through it with them. Like, do you date, do, pe do we go out there and date people who are depressed? <laughs> That's a great question. I mean, I think that depends on who you asked. Because I feel like depression is such a pervasive mental illness in our culture. If you throw a rock right now, wherever you are, you're going to hit about two to three people that's depressed. Be that clinically or just situationally. It's something that runs rampant within the human race. It's a part of being sentient and being aware of yourself. If you're aware of yourself, like a dog just knows okay, uh, I want food, I want treats, I want this, or I want that. A dog doesn't have these ideas of, okay, I'm this age, I should have accomplished this amount of goals, or, oh, this is where I am situated to the rest of my family, or a dog has no sense of itself as a being who exists in a wider world. We, as humans, we have that, and I feel like depression is just a common byproduct of that sentience. So if we choose not to debrate to date depressed people, I feel like we're gonna either end up A alone, B with someone who's lying about it, or C with someone who's working on it. And that's just my perception when it comes to that. Yeah. Yeah, working on it, I could see that. Cause then you can see the progress you know, but someone who's just, who's depressed and not working on it, working on themselves, working on being happy themselves, then anything can add to your depression at that point. Yes, I totally agree. I definitely agree with that. I think it's hard because mental health is so real. I think it's hard to, you know, get to a place where you know, okay, I still have certain issues, but I have worked on myself enough to be able to invite love into my life. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know. I just feel like <laughs> speaking on that, it's kind of like just mental health affects relationships in general. So if we could just touch on a little bit like how mental health affects relationships and of course we're like keying in on romantic relationships but that's not all we're talking about we're talking about romantic we're talking about platonic we're talking about familial we're talking about all these different types of relationships how does mental health affect those i mean that can go so deep uh you know i don't want to go too deep into it um because it you we really have to work on ourselves before we go and date other people um that's the main thing i can say like if you're not happy by yourself then you shouldn't be dating anyone like other people should not be what makes you happy what makes you get up in the day other people should not be your purpose um at least not your romantic partners mm -hmm. uh you know so so mental health affects our relationships in in so many ways when we aren't practicing self-care looking out for ourselves and then dating thinking that a relationship is going to solve uh some of those issues like if you don't have high self-esteem if you don't have good self-esteem then you know if you feel like you need an ego boost you might 
go date someone for an ego boost and then get bored because really you were dating them for reasons, not, you know, in genuine reasons Mm -hmm. or, you know, not genuine reasons. So um, it was never going to work and then people get upset and your life was in chaos for the past year because you were dating, you know, I mean, self-care and mental health really does um, make all the difference. Mindset makes all the difference in our lives. So um, you don't have to go deep into that to touch on, on a lot that mental health affects in our relationships. Mm, And that was so deep how you went into that topic. Like you really just expressed that in a way that I don't even believe could be more could show more intellect but also be so accessible like i love the way you express that honestly Mm -hmm. yes and um thank you i kind of feel like to be honest me if you ask my perspective i definitely do think that polyamorous relationships or polyamorous unions can be a playground for those of ill mental health with ill self-esteem and all these things, I think that it can be a playground. And I feel like it's important for me to say this, like as a person who advocates for polyamory and as a person who is polyamorous and who has been a part of the lifestyle, what I will say is that there are a lot of infiltrators, as I will call them, that come into the polyamorous lifestyle to hide from themselves, to hide from them the fact that they've been unable to have a successful monogamous relationship hide from the fact that they have been unable to connect with people emotionally. I feel like our community, because we are so open-minded, we leave so much room for these types of infiltrators to come in. And these are the people that end up being the face of polyamory and end up being the go-to when some news station or some random person wants to come. What can we know about polyamory? It ends up being these unhealed toxic people and I feel like it's so necessary for others within the community to be like no that shit is toxic this is not how we do things and and, and that's just how I feel I feel like a lot of what is being put out in the media about polyamory is the most toxic of us and you absolutely have to come into this lifestyle partially healed working on being fully healed and ready to work because it's not just going to be like This ain't just, oh, monogamy without the commitment. No, there's so much commitment and there's so much education and there's so much that has to be invested into this shit. I feel like a lot of people that are coming into it are just not ready, period. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, A lot of people are not ready to be in a monogamous relationship, let alone polyamory. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, definitely. And um, I feel like there's a lot of couples <laughs> in the polyamorous community who are sullying up the waters, so to speak. Um, I've been hearing a lot about single women who have been going out and dating. And when they hit it off with one partner and not the other, or they have more of a connection or better sex with one partner and not the other, all of a sudden they're being kicked out the situation by the partner who they didn't vibe with veto oh, yes. <laughs> that's exactly what this is this is one partner or both partners in the primary relationship holding on to the ability to say no she's out or he's out and a lot of people believe that the practice is unethical in general what do you think janine what's been your experience um about polyamory or vetoing? Vetoing. I um, vetoing. The veto power. So the only time I've experienced veto power was when I was a unicorn. I I did the unicorn thing for a little bit and I had a lot of fun. Um, I wanted to be a unicorn and they there was some veto power there, of course. And um, so it was, it was expected. It was fine. But. Uh, Wait, what happened? Her. Get into it. I can't 
I'm just looking at you and I could see there's a story there. Like, come her on. Husband, don't hold yeah, back. Her husband, um, her and I, her, I'm, her husband and I had a connection that she wasn't, like, we were both interested in something that she wasn't interested in. And she was cool with us exploring it. I don't want to say she was cool with us exploring it, but she was like, she was like cool with it, but she wasn't really cool with it. Mm. So it was like, we would have our fun, but we couldn't do too much because she wouldn't, she didn't want to join in to that. And, um, and then she wouldn't, she didn't really want to watch or anything. Like she wasn't interested in that at all. Yeah. Um, so uh, the veto power there was that like, she wasn't cool with me and him doing our own thing. She wanted to be there, but oh, she wasn't okay. interested in the same things that him and I were. So it was kind of like, like she, even though she was not, outright vetoing she might as well vetoed because she had to be there and and she wasn't into it, it was just she wasn't time. into it so yeah she had she was still controlling the situation um but otherwise i avoid veto power i think everyone should <laughs> um i think if you practice polyamory with a veto power then then um you should consider you should consider dropping the veto power if you find that a lot of your relationships are not lasting. That sounds amazing. I think that's great advice, actually. And I I personally feel like veto power could be more harmful than helpful in a lot of cases. That's my perspective on that. Yeah. So I mean, oh, like it sucks that you had to go through that because it's like you had a connection with this person and now everything's falling apart because this other woman isn't interested. I mean, that's so messed up. Yeah, it was all right though. Um, I was a unicorn, so, you know, it's kind of, I, I took it as it came. It, I had no expectations. Okay, so you weren't too disappointed. Yeah, but I avoid veto power. So let me ask you this, who do you feel like has the most power in these dynamics, the primary or the secondary partner? Um, I think it depends on if there is a veto power. Um, I don't know, I, I can't say one or the other. Uh, it seems like the obvious answer would be primary, so. I, I guess, don't know. What do you think? Uh, see, so me, I feel differently. I feel like it depends because you could be the quote unquote primary partner and then somebody else come in and all of a sudden you're taking that secondary role. And that just depends upon the connection of the people involved. Nobody can really, I don't feel like, obviously I know it's enforced in a lot of cases, but I don't feel like if a third person comes in and has a stronger connection with one of the two people in the additional party, in the initial party, I don't think that's something that can be hid from. I think roles can be reversed. That's how I feel. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, roles can definitely be reversed. Um, I don't do the whole... Like, I think power can go in and out. I think roles can be reversed. Power can go back and forth. So I'm finding it hard to answer that question. Yeah. So what do you mean when you say power can go back and forth? Uh, when you asked who has all the power, um, I think whoever has the power isn't going to hold it for very long like the power goes you exchange power oh that makes sense i think you're right about that so like just because a person is in a position of power in this relationship doesn't mean that that's something that is stagnant that's something that changes right, right. yeah I think that's true i agree with that because like you can enter a relationship with someone and you be the person with all the power 
and then one incident occurs and now all of a sudden the roles have switched. And I feel yeah. like that is going to be a part of any relationship. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to go back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also a little bit of a relationship anarchist. So how so? Um, like, I don't. I don't really. I'm still trying to figure it out, but I don't treat one friend like differently because I've known them longer. Like, I don't say, oh, because I've known this friend longer than you, I'm going to spend more time with them. Yeah. I don't have like a, I don't have like a, a hierarchy or different tiers for my friends as far as like seniority yeah um and and that's some some kind of relationship anarchy where you don't like have any kind of hierarchies to it um yeah, yeah. i like that i think that's a very interesting concept actually like to have your relationships just based on the connection alone as opposed to some sort of time limit like oh because i've known you this long that means we're this close when that's not actually the case with the relationship yeah oh so it does it does uh go dark when you go away from the screen i was curious oh it does yeah hold on You know what I think? What's that? <laughs> no. If you can see me. Okay. Can you see me now? Mm hmm Yes. You know what I think? Glowing. I think that it all gets incredibly complex. And I feel like just thinking about the different dynamics that could occur or how things could be or structure themselves. I think you can damn near blow your brains out <laughs> working with that, you know? So I don't think it's anything. I feel like intuition is the most important tool that and education, of course, but intuition definitely are your most important tools when you're exploring these kinds of things. And I think we have been running our mouths <laughs> before. <laughs> Before we leave the people, we got to leave them with one thing. Okay, Janine? Yeah. You, you got to tell us in less than five words how you let a dusty infiltrate your dynamic, just in general. Go ahead. You got five words. How to let someone No, not how to let someone. How you have in the past let someone. Um, by not respecting my boundaries. Oh, that's so sweet. And that is definitely five words. Gary Smith says, y'all are so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Send us money. You see the cash yeah. app. Thank you so much. Thank you. So thanks. for me, uh, how I let a dusty infiltrate my relationship. I got five words and, um. I think Janine is going to be pretty familiar with these because I told you the story. Hold up. I only need four words. I was pepper sprayed. Mm. <laughs> and I believe that's all you need to know. I mean, it doesn't get dustier than that. I don't think it gets more problematic than that. And it definitely burns. But that is definitely a time where I allowed somebody into my relationship who was not necessarily meant to be there. But you know something? I learned from it. So like, I'm not tripping. I'm not tripping about nothing. I mean, it happens in relationships. Things go left. Ain't that right, Janine? Janine, Janine. I think Janine has frozen up on us, guys. Oh, wait, are you, you're back. Yes. 
Okay, Janine. So just leave the people with one thing and we're going to let them go. Just one good piece of advice. Uh, know what your boundaries are. Know your exactly. values. Know your standards. Know your boundaries. Yes. And I don't think it could be any better said. I think that was amazing. I think we did a good job. That was a fun <laughs> show. Always. So with that being said, see you next time. Bye, y'all.